Um, there's two triangles involved here. Find a, trying to find this thing, this side over here. Call it whatever you want. In that triangle, all you're given is a, well, you're given two angles, the right angle and 26 degrees. You could find the other angle, but if you don't have a side, you don't know the size of it, right? It could be any old size. But you do have enough information in this other triangle. So you have enough, you have enough information. You need an angle and a side and to know it's a right angle triangle. Then you can find something missing. So if you're trying to work your way over to what's in yellow there, you can first find something in the, in the other triangle. The idea that those are stuck together is you can find that side because it's in both triangles, right? If you want to find that, you use this side and this angle, you can find that. You could give this a name, you could call it X or whatever. You know, it doesn't matter what you call it. Let's call these X and Y. First, you want to find X, right? If you want to find X there, you got to set up a trig equation for that using those other two things. If it helps draw that triangle separately, like draw that whole triangle separately if you want. So if it helps draw a picture of that one, you got, this is the right angle, this is 47, and you got 4.2, and you got X here, right? If it helps draw it separately like that instead of, because it gets kind of, you know, it's hard to see sometimes over when it's stuck to the other one. From that angle, this is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. So we're using which of the three ratios? Sine. Sine of 47 is, which way does it go? 4.2 over x or x over 4.2? That x is on the bottom there. As soon as you find that, you can start to solve that to find what it is. However you do this, in your whether you multiply both sides or you switch that or whatever, you end up with 4.2 divided by sine of 47. Now this is where it becomes a little bit maybe tough because you're going to get a decimal number here and then you're going to have to use that to find something else. So if you're trying to get a decimal number here, if this says to the nearest tenth, like if you want your final answer to be to the nearest tenth, make sure you keep a lot more of it here. Don't round it off here to the nearest tenth. Keep much more than the nearest tenth. So if you're working this out here, and again, make sure when you, especially if you borrow my calculators, you got to make sure they're in degree mode because my grade 12s change them to radian mode under mode there. Same with your calculator if somehow, some, if you're getting weird numbers for things. 4.2 divided by sine of 47. So I would keep, you know, at least four or five decimal places of that. Or if you have a way of storing it on your calculator, on here I can go store this STO button, store, I can store it as, I can actually store it as X, or any one of the green letters on there, any of those. Okay, so then I can just get that back again if I need it. Okay, so it's roughly 5.7427 whatever. What was the first one? Two? I forgot already. Okay, I'm going to put dot, 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 because I'm going to save the rest of it on my calculator. And then I need to, from there, move this a bit. Okay, and then I need to take that number now. Now that I know what X is, I can use the other triangle, right? Now that I know what that is, I can use it in this triangle. So it's kind of going to be a two-step process here. Finding one thing, then using it to find another thing. In that triangle, and we'll, we'll try and draw it in the same orientation here, like this. Okay, that's that triangle. This is X that we actually know what it is now, right? 5.742. And this is Y, and that's 26. So what, what ratio would I use to find that? To find that Y? That one? Well, you got, uh, from there you have the adjacent. Right, that's adjacent to that angle. Adjacent and hypotenuse. So you want to set something up there that's something along the lines of cosine 26 is y over x, which is 5.742 dot dot dot, right? If you want, you can just put x there, or you can actually put the number in. 
And you should probably say it's approximately if you're putting the number in, because it is approximately. So if you want to solve this, y is going to be 5.742, whatever. Actually, if I was rounding it here, it would be 5.743, whatever. Let's leave it. Let's leave it at that. Roughly that. I can write this down even though I'm using more accuracy on my calculator. So on the calculator, I'm going to keep that number now. I'm going to go times cos 26. Okay. Even though you wrote down sort of the rounded off number, you get 5.16. And if it's close to the nearest tenth, you want 5.2, right? It's not a bad idea to write down more accuracy first and then round it, just to make sure we're not doing rounding, having rounding errors. Okay, 5.2. So that's that missing piece there. You gotta kinda go through two steps to find it. Now this one down below here looks different, but it's the same idea. You're probably gonna have to go through and do something. This one's tougher because you have triangles that might be overlapping, right? You actually have three triangles when you have this overlapping thing, right? You have um, you have this triangle, you have this triangle, and you you actually have the big triangle as well that you could use. Okay, if you have that, if 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 this thing's ninety here, this is ninety. Okay, now you you're not told uh, you're not told the other ones here that. This is 90, but it's got a common, it's got two common angles, so it has to be. Okay, so you can you can work through that one as well on your own sometime, and then the answer is right there. The other thing that's in here is same idea, but uh, problems where you have to make one calculation first and then use that answer to find another thing. This one, don't forget, the answer was wrong here. You got to correct it. Or the question was wrong, whichever way you want to look at it. That should be 63.1 instead of 74.6 on page 22 there. If you're going to work through this one, think about what it is you're trying to find. Even label it on here, right? Determine the height of the taller building. So you're trying to find this whole thing right here, right? Now, you actually know part of it already. It says 20 meters is over here, and assuming that line is horizontal, this is 20 right here. But you got to find this. In order to find that, you need to know something else about that triangle. And just like the previous one, if you know, if you know enough about this triangle, well, blue on blue doesn't really work too well, does it? Let's outline it with this. If you know something about this triangle, you can find this side here and then use that side to find this side. So again, it's going to be kind of a two-step process there. You can give things names and then find them, right? This whole length, you can call it H maybe for height or whatever letter you want to use. Maybe this is Y here. Maybe this is X. So look at the two triangles separately. First use that, first work with that one, and then find whatever it is you need to find, find that X. I think it helps to draw the thing separately so that you're not trying to get mixed up on there. That's that's 15 degrees, angle of depression. This is 20, and we want X there. You set up a trig equation for that from this 15 degrees. That gives you X, and then you can use X to find that, okay? Here you're going to use tangent, right? Tangent 15 is x over 20, or 20 over x. Which way is it? Which way does it go? x over 20, 20 over x, which way does it go? That's the opposite, right? So that one goes on top. However, your whatever your method of isolating x there is, you end up with this, and you can work out what. Oops, 
you can work out what x is there, that horizontal distance. Twenty divided by ten fifteen. So you got seventy four point six four one roughly. Remember that if you uh, if you're wanting the answer to be to the nearest tenth, probably keep a few more decimal places in this answer at the very minimum. Again, you can you can save it on the store it on the calculator or just save all the decimals in the calculator if you want. Then you need to work with the other triangle, this top triangle, right? There's that top triangle, and now we figured out that this is 74.641, roughly. And we know that this is 30, and we want to know this distance now, right? So there when you got, that's the opposite. That's the adjacent. What ratio do you use for that one? Opposite, adjacent. You're going to use tangent again. If you have the two legs and not the hypotenuse, you use tangent. Tangent of 30 degrees is y over 74.641. And technically, if we're being correct about this, we should put a roughly equal to sign in there because we rounded this off. That's a finer point, though. So if you want to find y, y is roughly 74.641 times tangent of 30 and that gives you what it is you're looking for so that number times tangent of 30 and that gives me not the answer down the bottom right 43.0 what was it 43.09 4 That's not the answer at the bottom of the page. Why, why not? That's just this distance here, right? That is this distance. We also want, well, we want the whole thing, right? How do I find the whole thing then? How do I find what H is? H is, how do I find what H is, the height? Add those together, right? It's, uh, it's going to be 20 meters plus y, right? 20 plus y. 20 plus 43.09, basically. 63.09. And if you want it to the nearest tenth, then you can just say 63.1, right? Okay, approximately 63.1 meters. Should answer with the units and maybe a word or two, not just h equals all right now there's one other problem that's on here I'm not going to do this one for you but there's that your turn question but there's one other problem here that it's hard to see what this is but this is sort of three-dimensional here this is meant to be three-dimensional there's a tower there and looking off one direction here and then looking off at a right angle here this is a right angle in there on the ground and these two things are that's standing up off the ground Right, so it's imagine two triangles that are at right angles like that. So there's three right angles in here. All those are right angles. When you're trying to solve that, and it says how far apart are those two fires? So you're going to have to do the same thing. Work within a couple triangles and use answers you find to find the last thing. Does that make sense to you? You need to you need to label the heights. It's hard to see, but that's you know that's. Five degrees, you have to think of some other, you know, uh, angles in there. So the goal for today would be to try and get a good chunk of this section done and even some of the assignment. If you, I know some of you are well ahead of that by now, which is fine. <laughs>